For this week's Macro Monday tutorial, we're going to take a look at a little used node called Gradient Probability, a macro that allows you to switch between two different values based on their position along either the X or the Y spline. Let's look at this building as an example. The architect has decided they'd like to use orange spandrel panels at the bottom of the building and blue at the top. In between, they'd like to gradually transition between the two colours. And that's where the Gradient Probability macro can help out. Before we look at the macro though, Let's actually create the building since it's a very simple setup. It consists of just three segments and uses two splines. A circular spline defines the footprint of the building and a curved spline describes the profile. For the materials, there are two IDs set aside for the spandrel panel. Material ID 1 is the orange color and material ID 2 is reserved for the blue color. On the geometry, all the spandrel panels are currently assigned material ID 1. Also of note, this building can be created using the free, light version of RailClone. Get it from the i2 software website. OK, so now let's turn these simple components into a building. Create a new RailClone object and assign the existing material. Open the style editor. Add an A2S generator. This generator can be used to create double curved, two dimensional arrays using splines for the X and the Y axis. Create a new spline node. Go to its properties and pick the circular spline from the scene. Wire the spline node to the generator's X spline input. Create another spline node and wire it to the generator's Y spline input. Pick the profile spline from the scene. Now we'll bring in the geometry. Create three new segment nodes and use them to pick the three facade objects from the scene. Wire them to a new randomize operator and wire the randomize operator to the default input and your building should be created. The last thing to do is just to change the generator's default segment mode to adaptive. This will subtly scale the segment so they're not sliced at the end of the spline. That's the basic building setup done. You now have a tower with randomized spandrel panel geometry but the same orange color. Let's look at creating the gradiated probability color effect using the built-in macro. So to do this, wire a material node between the randomized node and the generator. This operator is used to control and randomize material IDs. Use the material ID property to choose which ID you wish to manipulate. To control the selected material ID with the macro, we need to expose the to and from values as inputs. To do that, right click on the material node and go to export parameters. Select from and to and then click export. Now go to the macros panel and open the arithmetic group. Drag a graduated probability macro to the graph. Wire the macro to the materials from and to inputs. This macro now controls the new material ID assignment. Select the macro and go to the properties panel. It has just five parameters. Operate on XY allows you to choose whether the gradiated effect should use the array's X or Y spline. For our example, we'll use the Y spline, so check this box. Value 1 is the number that the macro will output at the start of the spline. In this example, we want to use the orange color, so we'll set this to 1. Value 2 is the number that the macro will output by the end of the spline. In our example, we want to use the blue color, so we'll set this to 2. The transition position marks the center of the gradient using the values 0 to 1. 0 represents the start of the spline, and one the end. So to set the transition to the middle of the building's height, for example, you'd set this to 0.5. And then the size over which the gradient effect takes place is set using the transition range property. The larger this value, the more the transition expands from either side of the position. And that's more or less there is to it. It's a simple macro, but for some effects, it can save a lot of time. In this tutorial, we've used the macro to control material IDs, but it can also be used with anything that has a numeric index input. For example, instead of changing the material assignment, it could also be used in conjunction with the selector node to gradually change the geometry based on a spline's position, in this case to add a cap to the building. Once again, we hope you're enjoying this tutorial series, and please stay tuned for more videos explaining how to use RailClone and ForestPack's built-in macros and effects.